Now we're gonna move Kirby through four progressions, which is exactly how I recommend you train this skill for yourself. And in addition, if you wanna learn more about how to do this in a little bit more detail, you can go to the Topspin Mastery, what's it called? Formula. Sorry, Topspin Formula inside of Academy. Uh, goes into a little, bit, a little bit more detail with these progressions, uh, but this is a great place to start. If you already have some good topspin and you wanna exaggerate it, and create a little bit more of a curve, uh, this is a, a good place to, to start. So Kirby's gonna start off with shadow swings. You're gonna see her make a unit turn, drop her racket head so that it points down towards the courts, and then come up to contact it waist tight. So Kirby, I'd like to see you segment the drop, and then contact, and then follow through. So from the bottom of her swing to contact, she's raising the racket a good 12, 18 inches. And that's ultimately what's creating this curved ball flight, is the distance between the bottom of her swing and contact. That vertical change is what's getting the ball up in the air, creating the topspin to actually cause it to dip and curve back towards the other side of the court. Let's see, one more of those. Racket head down, then up to contact, and then around. Now Kirby's gonna drop and hit. She's not gonna aim for any cones. Instead, she's gonna aim for a spatial target. Her goal is to hit a ball that goes three feet over the net and lands around the service line. But no width uh, target yet. So let's see a couple of those. So drop racket head. Nice, good curve. A little bit higher, but same depth would be great. Try to exaggerate this at first. Uh, to be totally honest, rarely do we wanna aim three feet over the net. But this is a good place to start to get a feel for really rolling the ball and really curving the ball. Nice, good height there. Now let's try to make it go a little bit shorter. So a little bit more exaggerated. And that aggressive dip down towards the court is what's gonna give us the ability to find our opponent's feet or create sharp angles uh, so that we have a nice range of different abilities to hit around, nice, hit around our opponents. Okay, now I'm gonna feed a couple to Kirby. And uh, again, no width target, but off of feed, now she's gonna execute that same shape. That's really the key word here across this entire series on technique is shape. Iro hitting very lateral, very flat and direct. Now Kirby is gonna hit with a lot of curve. Nice shot. See a little bit more height, but that same depth. Nice, it's just about perfect right there. A little bit higher would be nice. Nice, good shape. And then finally, we'd add width into the equation as well. And so I would maybe move her a little bit more and ask her to hit that same shape. And we would maybe do 10 towards this target and then 10 towards the other one. Uh, we'll just do a couple in each direction. Uh, so let's go down the line, Kirby. A little less space for her to work with here, so even a little bit more exaggerated uh, curve down the line. It's a little bit too flat. Nice shot, but a little bit low. Good curve. There we go, good. And now a couple cross courts towards that cone. Nice shape. A little bit too flat. Good shape, one more. Nice, good curve. So, highly recommend for those of you at home, experiment with this. Especially in the drop and hit phase where you're just dropping to yourself and hitting, experiment with different degrees of racket head drop. That is the number one element that ultimately is resulting in this curved, dipped, ball flight. Without the curve and the dip, we lose our ability for angles, we lose the ability to get the ball down at our opponent's feet. If all you have is that lateral flat one that Ira demonstrated, then you're really, really restricted as far as the different ways that you can challenge that net player as you try to hit around them. 